today, you're connected more than ever. Your friends, your family, your life. Having a partner that understands banking is what you do on your time, anywhere you like. It's about being connected. Renaissance Bank, understanding you. Sponsored by Renaissance Bank. Good morning, Northeast Mississippi. This is News Break for Tuesday, September 27th. I'm Brad Logg, bringing you a quick update on news and sports headlines and the weather as well. Let's start with that, shall we? The weather underground forecast. And guess what? Good news, unless you're a fan of the suffocating heat. We've, we've got uh, more fall-like uh, conditions coming our way this week. Today's forecast, partly cloudy skies. High of 84, low of 53, zero percent chance of rain. Three-day outlook, high of 87 on Wednesday with a low of 54, clear skies, zero percent chance of rain, and then cooling off even more on Thursday, clear skies again. High of just 77, low of 53, zero percent chance of rain. And on Friday, clear skies once more, high of 79, low of 54, 10 percent chance of rain. Okay, let's check out some of the top headlines now from your daily journal. A couple of projects will soon make a big difference at Saltillo City Park. County crews started repaving the half mile walking track on Monday morning. They also will complete a tennis court expansion in the coming weeks. Saltillo Mayor Rex Smith said the work on the walking track should be done in a couple of days. Workers will fill cracks on the uh, track and lay down an inch of new asphalt. They also will repair spots in the parking lots and road. The tennis court expansion was scheduled to be completed in August but the work is already three weeks late and the new court surface still needs work. The four-month project resurfaced the existing three tennis courts and added a fourth court as well as new fencing and lighting. It will cost $173,000 and will be funded in part by a grant from the Mississippi Department of Wildlife, Fisheries and Parks. Smith said he hopes the courts will be ready for tennis in a couple of weeks. New funding will help students for, from low-income families take advanced placement tests in high school. The Mississippi Department of Education announced Monday that Mississippi is one of 41 states, along with Washington, D.C., that received a total of $28.4 million from the United States Department of Education. The MDE received $189,781 in grants as part of its efforts to boost college and career readiness for historically underserved students. By subsidizing advanced placement test fees, the AP test fee program encourages all students to take AP courses and tests, allowing them to obtain college credit while still in high school. This allows students to reduce the time and cost required to complete a post-secondary degree. One AP test costs $93, which can add up for students looking to take more than one. Kerry Wright, State Superintendent of Education, said the grant money will help create equitable access for students seeking opportunities to earn college credit in high school. Based on the anticipated number of tests to be taken, the grants under the AP test fee program are expected to be sufficient to pay all but $15 of the cost of each AP test taken by low-income students. Golfing legend Arnold Palmer died on Sunday at age 87, leaving behind a host of fans and admirers. Some of those fans had a chance to meet the king in person during his prime. Several area residents recall Palmer visiting Tupelo sometime in the late 1960s or early 70s. No one is quite sure of the exact date, but Palmer was a spokesman for Rockwell Manufacturing, which at the time had a plant in Tupelo, and he hit a few tee shots at the old Tupelo Country Club, now known as Bel Air Golf Course. Courtney Godwin of Tupelo recalled getting his picture made with Palmer. Pat Caldwell, also of Tupelo, remembers Palmer hitting several shots from the number one tee. He and his friends went scrambling after the golf balls, and Caldwell still has the one he retrieved. MC Ellis of Mayhew was the golf pro at Bel Air that day, and he said he loaned Palmer a glove, which the great signed after using it. And in local sports, Scott Strickland is leaving his alma mater to take a job at the University of Florida. USA Today first reported that Strickland, who has been athletics director at Mississippi State since 2010, will be introduced today as the Gators' new AD. He replaces Jeremy Foley, who is retiring Saturday. Strickland is, is an MSU grad who worked in the school's media relations department from 1990 to 92, and he's also held positions at Auburn, Tulane, Baylor, and Kentucky over the years. He returned to Starkville in 2008 and served as Senior Associate Athletics Director for External Affairs before taking over as AD when Greg Byrne left for Arizona. Strickland has overseen a period of significant growth in MSU's athletics department, including the construction of a new football-only facility and expansion of Davis Wade Stadium, plus major renovations at Duty Noble Field are planned for next year. 
That's it today for news break. We do want to remind you about one of the podcasts we produce here at the Daily Journal, The Memo, with myself and W. Derek Russell. Find it every Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Listen to it for free in iTunes, your podcast app, or at memo djournal.com. We just talk about all things Northeast Mississippi news and entertainment. All the stories I talked about here today you can find in your daily journal and at djournal.com. Give us a follow on Twitter at djournal now and go find our Facebook page and give it a like as well. That's it today for News Break. We'll be back tomorrow. I'm Brad Locke. Have a good one.